Okay guys, so before I get into my video, I just wanted to show you guys what the lipsticks actually look like up close before I get into the video. I feel like it would be easier for you guys to see what these lipsticks actually look like if I show you um, on my phone. Um, as of right now, again, I just noticed this now that there's like a little bit of lipstick on the side of the tube. I think that just happened right now. So again, that's nothing that's too much of an issue for me. I do see another dent over here and I do see, you know, those scratch marks that people are talking about. But again, nothing too concerning or weird about the lipsticks for me to not use them. I think I'm going to stop using them after today though. This is later in the day after I filmed this video. Um, so this one, again, this is the state of it right now. It doesn't look that pretty, but it doesn't show anything too concerning. Probably just this part, to be honest. It looks like this part is kind of, I don't know, weird looking. Like just when I push it up from the tube, this is what it looks like. So I feel like it kind of gets worse and worse every single time you roll it up and down the tube, but I don't see anything weird. So that is the first one also because I did my skincare recently, so there might be some oils on my hands still. Um, and then this is Obsessed. The first one that I showed you was Amaze Balls. Now this is Obsessed. I haven't looked at these before this, um, before I showed you anything. Again, not really noticing anything too alarming as I can tell. Um, this is what this one looks like. I don't know if this one's like out of focus now. There we go. That's better. Um, I don't know why I keep on having to refocus it. Um, but this one seems to be okay as well. Um, it just looks like there are, you know, bits of, you know, grittiness. But other than that, that is just the lipstick itself. Um, shedding a tiny bit and there is a scratch mark up here but once I wipe it away it seems to be fine I do see that this one does look a bit weird on this side as well I don't know why um, so yeah I just wanted to show you both of these um, I do see that that wasn't really there before there are a ton of scratch marks on this side now so I don't know I think I'm gonna stop using these for now um, I didn't really experience any issues the first two times I've used them but now they look a little bit weird and I feel um, most people said that they started having issues after a few days of use if they didn't notice anything initially wrong with them so yeah um, that is my update for now before we get into this video also if you guys didn't see Jacqueline did make another statement on Twitter um, before I had made this video um, of course, she made it a few hours ago saying um, that she is looking into the lipsticks and investigating the issue that is going on with the lipsticks. So she's not taking this lightly. She is um, actually investigating. Hopefully, we'll be able to get a video and answers on why this is happening to all of these lipsticks. So hey there, guys. So today's video is going to be on, I guess, the infamous Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics lipsticks. Um, I'm going to be doing a follow-up review of the Jaclyn Hill lipsticks and I'm also just going to be talking about and addressing basically all of the drama that is surrounding this launch and how much crazy shit is going on. Um, I am currently wearing one of the shades on my lips so first off I'm going to talk about my experience with the lipsticks. I did touch on it when I first got them, but I really want to just go more in depth now since now I've worn them a few times and I really want to tell you guys what my thoughts are. So because in that video, I think I had only worn Obsessed that one time. I don't think I had tried Amazeballs yet. So I'm going to just show you guys what the lipsticks look like first. So the first one is Amazeballs and that's the one that I'm currently wearing on my lips right now. So this is what Amazeballs looks like after a few uses. I've used this one about three times now. And honestly, again, there isn't anything too concerning about the lipsticks for me. I think that they smell just fine. They don't smell old or anything like that. Um, but I just want to show you guys that there are, it is starting to get scratch marks on the top of the lipstick. If you guys can see that. Um... 
this one is like the only one that has started like really getting more scratch marks as a continued usage. And I do see a fuzzy on it. But I haven't had any of those weird like fibers or hairs that people have been finding. It's just been like tiny little fuzzies. And I'm just like, that's not like, I know that that's a, um, sometimes that, that is a health issue, but I have gotten ColourPop lippy sticks before, like a while ago when I first started like trying the formula. They would have like those little fuzzies, like one or something on the lipstick. And so for me, it's not really too concerning. Like I don't see anything else on here that concerns me to not continue to use it. I haven't experienced any weird grittiness, anything weird when I wear them. They perform very well when I'm wearing them. I'm not encouraging you guys to purchase these whatsoever. Um, just because I have been enjoying mine, it does not mean I'm recommending them to you at all whatsoever. Just because there is so much that's going on with these lipsticks that it's like I don't feel comfortable recommending these to you guys at all. So that is the shade of Maze Balls, And then the other one is Obsessed. And then this is the current state of this one. I've used this one about twice now. Um, yeah, I've used it twice. I used it yesterday and I used it like a couple of days before that. And this one also is getting those scratch marks. And again, I do see one little piece of fuzzies. But that might be just from my tissue because I am like kind of constantly wiping them off to get rid of like those scratch marks. Which is a little bit annoying, honestly. I'm going to swatch both of them for you guys. So that's what this one looks like. Um, I feel like I'm going to use these up so quickly, you guys. Like, I feel like there's, like, no product in these. That's probably the thing that annoys me the most about these. Is the fact that there's... I don't feel like there's so much product in here. But after comparing them to my other lipsticks... Right, I do see, like, grittiness on the top a little bit. I'm going to swatch them for you. I think after this, I'm just going to stop using them. But I do like the formula. It's, like, annoying because the lipsticks are actually pretty nice. Uh, I don't know, like, what she was thinking, honestly. So that one is Balls, And then this one, yeah, I don't see anything weird. But that one is Obsessed. I don't know if I showed you guys that one already. But that's what that one looks like. They just don't look pretty. So this one is Obsessed, and I'm giving you guys some pretty involved swatches. I don't see anything concerning as I'm swatching them. They just get those scratch marks, so I'm not getting any of those air bubbles or weird fuzzies or anything like that. So that one is Amazeballs, and this one is Obsessed. So that is what they look like for now. Again, they are performing just fine for me. Now, let's address all of the issues that are going on with these Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics lipsticks. The first one that I really want to say, I guess we'll start off with her swatching video. So, in her swatching video, when she was, you know, announcing these lipsticks and showing you everybody's swatches, everyone was so excited to see the video because everyone has been ante anticipating the launch of her brand for such a long time, since basically 2015. The thing that, you know, has been concerning a lot of people is the fact that when she was doing her swatching video, that she was doing the swatches from, like, really far away. Like, she was, like, like probably back here and swatching them on her arm, like, over here. Now, I don't know about you, but that is not a way that people are going to be able to tell what your formula is like and what it looks like. So I feel like that was kind of the first red flag that everybody noticed. And I feel like the reason why she might have done that was to hide the fact that there were serious quality control problems about the lipsticks. And was hiding like the fact that they got gritty when they were swatched or that they looked gritty or weird when she swatched them on her arm. Um, I think that's probably the reason. Don't quote me on that. I don't know if she's that malicious to actually do that, but it's kind of like something that's been uh, going on in my head that I'm just like, why would she swatch from so far away from something that you've been working on for so long? Wouldn't you want to show off your lipsticks and show them on your lips or at least show them up close in the, swat in the swatches? Like, 
even when she was done like doing the lipstick swatches on her arm I don't think she zoomed up and showed all of them on her arm like I was like yeah they look good from a distance but it's like we don't know what they look like up close so that was like something that was concerning me the second thing is the delayed PR I think that's like probably one of the biggest issues that like really does bother me as well is and now since a lot of people are getting their PR kits and there have been so many bad reviews even about the PR kits from certain YouTubers that's crazy like the delayed PR the reason why there was delayed PR um I'm not exactly sure of the reason but it was delayed until basically when the lipsticks came out then that's when all the YouTubers were receiving their PR and People were saying the reason why she did this was because it was a selling strategy so the micro influencers would receive the PR first so they could give her nothing but glowing positive reviews and they would be like, oh my god, I can't believe I received PR from Jaclyn Hill. Like, she, I can't believe she knows who I am. And they can give, you know, their feedback saying, oh my god, this is amazing. Um, but I'm just like kind of questioning as to why like any of these people like didn't put up a review of them before the lipsticks launch if they were like the only ones that did p receive PR. Maybe they just didn't receive it early enough in order to post a video about it. So that's understandable. Like maybe she sent them out too late, like only a couple days before so no one can really get a review of them up. Except if it was, was like a first impressions lip swatching video. But those take a lot of time to film and to edit and upload. So yeah, so that was just weird. And then when people were actually receiving their PR kits, like Raw Beauty Christy, That Girl Shay, and now the most telling one is Patrick Stars. Um, I mean, it's not that um, That Girl Shay and Raw Beauty Christy weren't having issues. But people were waiting to see if, like, a bigger YouTuber with, like, a huge following. Because I love Rob Beauty Christy and That Girl Shay. I've been subscribed to them for a long time already. Especially That Girl Shay. She's amazing. She is, like, probably the most in-depth reviewer of products. Especially ColourPop products. She's, like, the only YouTuber that I see do live swatches of every product that she receives, like, in PR. <coughs> If she receives, excuse me, um, like a ColourPop collection of like pigments and stuff, she will live swatch them on her eyes. Like that girl is dedicated to her subscribers and she's awesome. I love her. And, but when you saw Raw Beauty Christie's video and she did like a super in-depth review of the ones that she had purchased because she was like not expecting to get PR at all but at the same time it's kind of weird that like micro influencers would get PR over Raw Beauty Christie because she does have like 500,000 subscribers so she definitely has a bigger following than a micro influencer that has like 20,000 subscribers. So when she had posted that she was having issues checking out um, on the website and she wanted to purchase the whole entire kit for herself, like the whole lipstick collection of all of the 20 lipsticks. Um, she like tweeted Jaclyn Hill and then Jaclyn Hill tweeted back to her and she said, girl, you're getting PR and you'll receive it tomorrow. And she's like, oh my God, I can't believe, but of course like <gasps> Raw Beauty Chrissy had already purchased her lipstick collection and so now she had like two sets of both. So she basically did a super involved video on purchase versus PR, like which is a series that many MUA does, but many MUA is not going to do that on the Jaclyn Hill lipsticks because she he's like best friends with Jaclyn. So, but anyway, she is probably the only person that like did a collection review of the purchase lipsticks and the PR lipsticks. I think that girl Shay did that too. Did she purchase them too? I think she just purchased them. I don't think she received PR, which is weird because she has like almost 3,000 subscribers as well. But anyway, I don't know. I, the whole PR thing is just like crazy to me. It's just such a big issue that like I don't understand like the people who got PR and like it's just weird. So anyway, um, so when Rob Beauty Christie was doing her video and she was showing like the lipsticks that were purchased, she said that they were 10 times worse than the ones that she got in PR. The ones that she got in PR, they didn't have, like, 
hairs on them and stuff that were in the purchased ones. The purchased ones were absolutely disgusting. I'm so happy I'm not someone that wants to spend $300 on a lipstick collection. I'm like, hell fucking no. I'm purchasing two lipsticks and that's it. And if something comes out about these within the next couple days, I think I'm going to stop using them for now and use other lip products that I got. And I probably do enjoy way more than these because out of all those lipsticks that I got in my recent haul, I definitely don't like these as much as the other ones, like the MAC lipstick and the Lip Blazes from Lime Crime and the new ColourPop Ultra Matte Lips. I think those are so much better than these. So anyway, so she was saying her purchased um, lipsticks were disgusting and the ones that, that she received in PR didn't have half as many issues. But the shade Mom was the one that was like, really concerning to her that was in the PR kit like how the hell are you sending out such bad lipsticks to influencers that are now going to expose your lipsticks because why wouldn't um YouTubers review your brand and if you didn't want the the risk of YouTubers swaying your consumers opinion and your subscribers opinion before they came out now it's going to sway them from ever purchasing from your brand again because now they're having a horrible experience. So what I think is that she just wanted to make her profit on these lipsticks before she actually announced that there was a serious issue. Because I even feel like if, there, if she's going to make an announcement and she's going to announce that there's a serious issue about the, the lipsticks... Some people are probably still going to keep them that aren't having any issues about them. And that's the way that she's still going to make money. Like, yes, yeah, she is offering refunds to people, but she is still charging people shipping, which is another huge um, concern of people, of, of them hesitating to send back their products. Because Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics is not just offering to give you a refund they're also offering that they want to replace your lipsticks and send you new ones and who knows how the new ones are going to be like you say the little lipsticks are sold out but you're still going to send new ones to people to replace them but the lipsticks are sold out on the website right now but you're not having a restock until like the end of june so that kind of makes no sense to me. Maybe because they're reproducing them right now because they are sold out. Then they might just get those rushed out to the people that need replacements. Maybe they're just like cleaning the ones that they send back and then they send it back to them. Like, I don't know. Like, this is such a huge issue because it's an online brand. So it's not like you can just return something to a store and get a new one. Like, you have to send it back to the factory and the factory has to send it back to you and if you're not satisfied the second time, it's like such a huge hassle for the consumer because there's no way can they, they can just take it back to a store and exchange it for a new one. They have to like send it back to the company and now it creates huge issues for the company as well because they have to give all these people their refunds but they're still charging people shipping and it's just like one big hot mess. So I find that very interesting that they're still going to be sending replacements to people even though all the lipsticks are now sold out on the website. They've been sold out for like a couple of days now. And the controversy that happened with these lipsticks was coming out at least a few days ago and people were still buying the lipsticks and they still ended up being sold out. There was only like a few shades le left by the time people were receiving their lipsticks and having all these issues. I think there was only like four or five shades left. But then within the last few days, um, they ended up being sold out. So people were still buying the lipsticks regardless of all the controversy. And sometimes that does help somebody's brand when there is controversy surrounding the brand is that people get curious and want to see if that's going to be a problem with their product as well. Like, I don't know if you guys remember when Kylie um, released one of her holiday palettes, I think it was like two years ago. And people were having massive issues with the smell of that eyeshadow palette. And I don't know if that palette was recalled or not, but that was a huge deal as well. But I guess because it's Kylie, she can just cover it up with all of her money because she's a Kardashian. Um, or Kylie Jenner, whatever their names are. Um, I don't 
support Kylie Cosmetics. I've never supported them. I think that they're such a shady brand. I don't buy anything from the Kardashians. Just, just no. So, um, but people were having huge issues with that eyeshadow palette. And that's even worse because that's on your eyes. Like your eyes are like your most sensitive part of your face, probably besides your lips. And if, Kylie was giving people serious eye infections like that would have been a huge 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 deal I think it was only a certain number of palettes. I don't think it was as wide scale as this issue was Don't quote me on that But I do remember that there were serious issues about some people's palettes smelling really bad like really chemically and like Not safe for the eyes because like some people use them and they said they were getting like eye irritation or um, it just wasn't performing well or like the eyeshadows were crumbling. So that was a huge issue. So what I don't understand is why Jacqueline would still go through with this if she knew that there were issues with her lipsticks because it seems that she says that she has no idea and then she says, of course I was aware of this issue but I was only made aware two days ago. I'm just like, I don't know. I feel like she keeps on trying to make excuses about this. Sorry, I just got a text message. But going back to Patrick Starr. So what Patrick Starr said um, on his video is that um, he had received the PR and he was showing it on a Snapchat. And he was showing that there was little hairs that were in his PR kit. And it's just like, if you're having these issues with your PR for people that receive your lipsticks to review them, and even those ones aren't good. It's just like, did you even care about the quality control of your lipsticks? Because I don't believe that these lipsticks are old. And I know that's a crazy thing to say because people are saying they think that these lipsticks are old because it still has the JH logo on it. And I think the reason why she has the logo on it is I think like it has to do with like a when you are married there is a certain contract sometimes that you have to um go by if like the d divorce like didn't go through all the way like there's a lot of issues that people or spouses have when they start a business or a brand or something i think that they have to share some of the rights and the profits with their um significant other I'm not sure how it actually works, but that might be the reason why that his initial and his last name is still on this product because, but people are also saying because since she has been develop, developing these since 2015, that's why his name is still on the product because they're old lipsticks because that's when she was still married to John. Because um, I think she divorced him in 2017 or 2018 or something. And these lipsticks still were not released because she um, went through a divorce. So, sorry, my boyfriend's on his way. So, for me, like, they don't smell old to me, but I just think it's a serious quality control issue. And I just don't understand why you would say to your subscribers that you put your heart and soul into this, that you tested this so much, that you've worked on this for like five years now, and the fact that you're having this many issues and they're not really addressing it properly is what's very concerning. Like, since this is falling all on Jacqueline, she is getting all of the backlash because it's not like Morphe just goes like, haha, we'll give you a new palette because... People were still fucking grilling Jacqueline because of the quality control that was going on with Morphe. But that's really on Morphe and not on Jacqueline Hill because that is a quality control issue with Morphe. But this is a quality control issue with Jacqueline because this is her brand. So I don't really understand why she's attacking people that are having serious issues and it's like not okay because she's basically saying that the reason why your lipstick looks like that is because you have chapped lips. And it's just like, that was, um, I forget that's like somebody said that about a certain product like a couple of years ago. And it wasn't about Jaclyn Hill products. Jaclyn has never released lipsticks before this. Um, but people are saying that, you know, she constantly has issues with launches 
And it all started back with Becca Cosmetics. And um, people are also saying that this is the biggest scandal, biggest makeup scandal since Lime Crime in 2015. And if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, it's a pretty infamous scandal. I feel like if I just say Lime Crime 2015, people will be like, I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, but for people that don't really know or don't really follow Lime Crime, because, like, I love Lime Crime, and I still purchase their products, and I don't want anybody to come for me to support Lime Crime, because if you support Morphe or Jeffree Star or Kylie Cosmetics, I'm not coming for you and saying, why do you support them? So I can support my brand, and you guys can support yours, and that's all I'm going to say on that. So anyway, um, with Lime Crime... People's information was stolen in 2015. It was a huge deal. Like, people were um, hacking the website and stealing people's credit card information, and a lot of people's money got stolen. Um, I think that Lion Crime has redeemed themselves from that whole thing. Um, I know that it took a while for them to bring it to light. I don't think I ordered anything from Lion Crime after that happened for quite a while, and then I decided to order from Lime Crime, but I think I used PayPal because people said to use PayPal when that happened. Um, but it's crazy that this is actually the biggest issue since that because this is sanitation. This is like when people's money and health is involved, that's basically the biggest issues. Um, like it's like people are saying it's not even about makeup anymore. It's about people's health. And if it's about people's money, those are, like, the two things that people are going to get fucking pissed about. Like, I would get pissed, too, if I was having the, the serious issues that other people were having, but I haven't had them. Um, but I'm going to keep on using them and testing them out. I mean, I'm probably not going to use them, um, but I'm probably going to refrain from using them from now on. Hold on one second. That's not hair, is it? No, it's not. No, it's just a scratch. All right, anyway. Um, so with Becca Cosmetics, yeah, so that was the whole thing with Lime Crime. So Becca Cosmetics, um, if you guys remember, like back in 2017 or 2016, there was a whole issue with um, Becca Cosmetics that she was supposed to release an eyeshadow palette with the whole Champagne Pop collection and she was having massive issues. Um, she was having massive issues with um, the eyeshadow palette, and Becca took the hit and recalled the eyeshadow palettes. And I think that's why she, like, hasn't pulled these yet, because I don't think she wants that controversy again. But at the same time, with the Becca situation, that wasn't a health issue. It was, it was just a quality control issue because people were saying they weren't performing that well. Like, basically the same thing that was happening with, with the Morphe Vault collection, which is kind of weird that that's happened now twice with her collaborations. I just think that is such a weird coincidence. I'm like thinking about these things as I'm filming this video. Like I did not realize like that there was a pattern with that, which is like so obvious, but it's just like, hello, I'm finally realizing it now. Um, but Becca took the hit financially pulling those palettes. And I think that's why Morphe didn't really actually destroy those palettes and pull them and recall them and reformulate them because they didn't want to spend the money doing it. And Becca didn't reformulate them and re-release them either. They know that they were going to be losing money not being able to sell these palettes. So they're like, we're not going to re, um, reformulate them and re, um, re-release them. Because they would also know how long it would actually take to do that if the palettes were destroyed and re-released. If Morphe did the same thing that they said they were going to do and destroy them and re-release them, they would have only, they would have not taken a month, um, like how little time it took those palettes to come out. People were like, what the fuck, how is this, like, taking so little time? Like, it takes a long time to reformulate and repress and repackage eyeshadow palettes. It takes at least, people said it takes at least three months, I think. 
or three to six months. And Becca wasn't going to do that because that was a smart move on their part is that we're not going to re-release it because we wanted it all to be a um, collection. And honestly, people are saying, you know, Becca did Jack and Dirty because they're making Prosecco Pop permanent without selling it without her name anymore. But that happened with Casey Holmes as well. Casey Holmes released a um, spotlight palette with Smashbox. And she said it was only going to be sold like that for a limited time. Once um, it doesn't have her name on it anymore, it's just going to be sold as a regular palette. And that is exactly what Smashbox is doing. Like, they're not stupid. It, they're not going to, like, not try and sell as many unit, units of a product as possible if they still have stock and they haven't sold out of it. They're still going to try and sell as much as much as they can to get people interested to buy the product still, um, regardless if the influencer's name is attached to it or not. And Jaclyn Hill is still making money on Champagne Pop. I think that's the one thing that is, she is still making money on. So anytime someone buys Champagne Pop, they are, she is still getting the money from that. I'm pretty sure that is the only thing that she's still making money off of. Not Prosecco Pop, though. Like, Prosecco Pop was not supposed to be a permanent shade, and then it ended up being a permanent shade. Um, and they started making their money on that, and I don't blame them for that. Like, before I was just like, oh, like, Becca's like the villain, but I'm like, they're really not, because they're just making their money, and people are like, Becca did Jacqueline dirty. I'm like, no, it's just their contract ended. Like, these people's contracts can't last forever um, for the company to not start making money off the products. Like, maybe they could have just scrapped the um, highlighter, but I think because those highlighters were so damn popular, but that's why they decided to sell them permanently. Um, the only thing that annoyed me about the whole Becca thing was when they re-released the face palette. That annoyed me so much because... When I was watching Leora's video, I love her to death, but she did do this whole video on products that Jaclyn Hill made me buy, and it was, like, collaboration stuff that she did, or it was, like, you know, products that um, Jaclyn Hill convinced her to buy that weren't collaborations, and she was saying that when they did the face palette, they made it limited edition, and then it was gone forever. Yeah, it was gone but then they brought it back, I think, like, in summer or fall or whatever. And they were like, we have a um, limited, super limited stock of these highlighting palettes. And I feel like some brands do that. Even Anastasia Beverly Hills, I thought they weren't going to do that with the Nicole Guerrero palette. They did that for, like, two days only with that palette, too. So I don't know, you guys. There are so many issues that are going on. I really do think that Jacqueline really needs to make an official statement about this whole thing. It is kind of crazy that she still hasn't officially said anything on her website because as of right now, all the lipsticks are sold out. I think the number one issue is people are going to question whether or not she is going to restock these lipsticks um, unless she makes a statement about it. I don't think she's just going to jump on Snapchat or YouTube and say, restock of these lipsticks come buy them if you didn't if you missed out the first time please go to our website and order them I don't think that's gonna happen um I don't think she's that stupid to not address it like it's not like she hasn't been addressing it on Twitter I don't know why people are acting like she hasn't addressed it she just hasn't made an official statement on YouTube or her website that but she has been addressing it on Twitter but she has not come on Snapchat or Snapchat or Instagram and said anything so, I don't know. Like, I just feel like with the beauty community right now, it's like scandal after scandal after scandal. And it's just like getting so ridiculous. It's like, it's not even about makeup anymore. It's not about anything fun anymore. And that's why I just stay in my little corner. But I do, it's not like I'm not going to say something about things that are concerning in the beauty community. Like, I was going to make a whole video about James Charles and that whole thing. And then I decided to be like, you know what, it's a waste of my time. Because honestly, this is a much bigger issue than that. Because this is a totally different issue that should be resolved. And this is the one time, I feel like it's so ridiculous when people um, do make requests for YouTubers to make a video apology and all that shit. But I think that this is the one time that it really needs to be done. She needs to get on YouTube and apologize personally to her subscribers and say, 
We are working on this issue. I am so sorry about this. There is really no excuse for it. Um, but people are saying the reason why that um, the lipsticks are bad is because of the factory that she produced them in. And there are images coming out say, looking like one of the workers wasn't wearing gloves. And it's just like, what? And the reason why she said that there are fuzzies in the lipsticks is because she said that her workers were using furry gloves that shed. And it's just like, why would a worker a factory worker ever use furry gloves to make lipsticks or any makeup product because that would totally affect the quality of the makeup product. And I think any makeup producer or factory worker or CEO of a makeup brand knows how to run their factory. And if she's been working on these for so long, how come she did not know about these quality control issues? She's just like, kind of victimizing and attacking her subscribers and her consumers that bought these lipsticks when meanwhile these people you know had faith in you for such a long time and were so excited for your brand and the fact that you're lashing out on these people doesn't really make much sense to me and the fact that you're saying the reason why your lipsticks have fuzzies on them is because of sh furry white gloves and that's why Marlena from Makeup Geek has came on Twitter and addressed it and also Gerard Cosmetics the CEO has also said things about her saying that and that's very very interesting because they are both brands that have worked with her before I don't I don't support Gerard Cosmetics but Jacqueline did have a collaboration with Gerard Cosmetics before Becca before Morphe Gerard Cosmetics was the first cosmetic brand that she had collaborated with and she ended up having a falling out with them that she never addressed on her YouTube channel. She was supposed to address it, but she never made a video about it. She just said, I do not support Gerard Cosmetics anymore, so all of my products are going to be pulled from the website, and they're only going to be sold not with my name attached to it anymore. Um, so I think that's why Gerard Cosmetics is coming out about it, because they probably feel a bit shady towards her because of that whole thing and that whole falling out and then the same thing with Marlena from Makeup Geek because Marlena was supposed to come out with a collaboration with Jacqueline and everybody knows about that I'm not I don't even need to get into that like basically they had a um collaboration that was supposed to go on but Jacqueline signed on to too many collaborations at one time and with uh, influencer working on multiple collaborations they pretty much have non-disclosure contracts and stuff like that that you can't release anything with another makeup brand when you're coming out with a collaboration because that obviously would sway attention from the um, collaboration that you're coming out with and that would damage like the company sales and everything like that so I think it's like a six-month window that you have to use or something I'm not really sure um, but I don't know. Um, but that whole thing went sour because Marlena didn't have a um, contract. And I still gave Jacqueline the benefit of the doubt then. Um, and then with the whole thing with Lime Crime, she said that she wasn't going to support the brand anymore because of the whole money scandal. But, like, then you're going against everything you believe in about, you know, making things quality and, you know calling out makeup brands for things that they're doing wrong when then meanwhile your brand is messing up big time. Um, and it's not just consumers, it's YouTubers as well that are coming forward. So I think that is everything that I have to say about this topic. I think I pretty much covered everything that I wanted to say. If you guys want more information, go to Marlena's Twitter. Um, I just think it's very interesting that Jacqueline stopped talking about Makeup Geek a while ago and she only mentions Morphe now. I just think that's interesting um, because she said that um, Marlena wasn't releasing anything interesting to her. Um, but Marlena had a quality control issue a while ago with concealers and foundations. That's why she didn't release anything new that year. And I think that's when they kind of fell off the radar a little bit more because everyone was like, Morphe, Morphe, Morphe with uh, Manny MUA and Jaclyn Hill and Kathleen Lights. They all were like huge Makeup Geek fans. Um, and now everybody talks about Morphe. And since Marlena didn't have a contract with Makeup Geek, that's why their 
collaboration never saw the light of day and she ended up renaming those eyeshadows that she was supposed to sell with Jacqueline. Oh my god, these dogs drive me crazy. And she started selling them on her website without Jacqueline's name. Because, like, obviously, like, she still has to make money off the products. She still lost a million dollars um, with Jacqueline saying that she's not working with Marlena anymore. But why wouldn't you have a contract is what is so weird to me. Because I guess she trusted Jacqueline enough to... Um, go through the collaboration because they were friends and it's just like it doesn't matter if you're friends or not you're always supposed to have some type of business contract if you have a business deal with somebody like but yeah um and she was pretty much saying like there is never like furry gloves used in any kind of production and she doesn't understand why Jacqueline would say that like because Marlena has been a CEO of a makeup company for quite a long time and she's the one person that has seen both sides of the spectrum because she started off as a YouTuber and then grew a humongous makeup company. And I still feel like Makeup Geek's products are super quality. I absolutely love Makeup Geek. Um, I haven't bought stuff from Makeup Geek, though, in quite a while. Um, for me, I just stopped buying stuff from them for a while because I thought that their products just got too expensive. Like, she used to be pretty mid-range prices, and then her prices got pretty much almost like high-end drugstore like L'Oreal Maybelline status but even more expensive like $25 for a highlighter I'm just like that's not even that much less expensive than a high-end one that's like $30 so that was the main reason why I stopped buying from her is just I thought she just got too expensive um so I don't know um let me know your thoughts you guys I really would like to know what you guys think um Again, I think I'm going to refrain from using them. I think that she should make a statement on her YouTube. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe. Follow me on all my social media. I love you guys. Bye.